All right, Tom, how's your day going so far? Good. Excellent, excellent. You just finished up with math, and now I'm going to put your uh, your mind to work and see how much you've learned here. Are you I on? Mean, you're you're eight. Have you are you doing percentages yet? Uh, I don't know what those are. Okay. Well, maybe I'm going to teach you something today. So, all right, you're giving me a hard time about my PSA nines, and I'm going to show you why they're not all that bad. And so, okay. okay, all right, we'll just throw out a couple of examples here. But a lot of people might be in the same um, situation as I am. You're getting into the hobby, not really a big grader, um, a fan of it or anything like that. But there's certain cards, especially at the higher end, um, you know, if you're going to drop a decent amount of money into it, that you want to get what you're you're paying for. You don't want to buy a Juan Soto for 50 bucks and then have a ding corner when you could have just got something that, you know, is a, is a nine, which is mint, you know, a good condition for yeah, a couple I, dollars more. Just, just, just get it in a good condition. Exactly, exactly. And there's some assurance with nine or ten. I can't tell the difference between nine but and ten, and, people, except for in the price. Sometimes people buy it in a good condition, and then it ends up, like, with dinged corners. Exactly. If you buy a graded card, there's less chance of that. Yes. So we're going to look at a few players here, and I'm going to show you mathematically why it's not always a bad uh, PSA 9 versus PSA 10, not a bad thing. So I don't think we're breaking new ground here, but this set lets me sleep, helps me sleep at night a little bit, knowing, you know, getting the 9s. So Okay, I already did temperatures, which I see the heat, but it's only going up to like 80, and now I'm having money going up to like 1,000. Yeah, not exactly the same. But, you know, hey, I appreciate the effort They still here. have numbers. So look, all right, Mike Trout in the middle of last year, his PSA 10 was selling for 950 bucks, call it, okay? Okay, that's nice. The PSA 9 was selling for about 520. 500... Exactly, so a little more than half. So that's actually a pretty close relationship. Usually what we're looking for is like a three times. You know, PSA 10 will, will trade for like a three times what a PSA 9 would go for, but Mike Trout is a little different animal here. So you can see on that first initial spike, you know, $2,400. In here, about 800 bucks. So you have that one to three... Uh, relationship here. So thirty one hundred dollars. We'd expect this to be around a thousand bucks. You know, a so thousand two hundred thirty. So it's within the way range. Lower. It, yeah, it's it's within the range here. So it kind of you know, there's a little bit of a lag here. What's the peak on this one? Three thousand six hundred. So yeah, so we're and looking then down at, there. It's only a thousand six hundred eighty two. Only, only, only. Yeah, exactly. So the relationship becomes a little bit tightened. So you'd expect that to widen, and you're seeing that a little bit here. So nine hundred thirty bucks, and this would be about twenty seven hundred, twenty five hundred dollars. So the point is. Tom, that even though the PSA tens, you start out by paying more money. In percentage terms, you make about you can make about the same as you would with a PSA nine. So if you look at you know kind of your starting point back here, okay, four hundred seventy three bucks. Where are you at now? You're at two thousand four hundred sixty five. Exactly. So it's gone up about six times, roughly, right? Yeah, but the PSA nine starting at two hundred sixty. And only going up to like 930. Exactly. So this has gone up about four times. There's not like you're not making money on PSA 9 or 10. So that one's kind of a interesting relationship. He. Uh... But the Mookie Betts, um, this one is, that one just... Hold on. I think for most players, the relationship is a little the, bit more yeah, solid. Yeah, for most players, um, like this one... Um, like PSA nine is still staying lower. It is always going to be. There's going to be demand and for the, the higher PSA cards. PSA ten, like that one big, that it's, one, that one big time going up, and then just, PSA. Well, let's let's start where it's not so nutty here. So okay, you got I mean, about PSA. Yeah. It's about forty bucks, and so that one's sitting at about one hundred and five dollars. So there's roughly almost three times, two and a half times. I mean, PSA it starts to diverge a little bit. PSA here. nine's not getting that much buys, but PSA ten is going to be a lot. Two hundred ten. About 55 bucks. Okay. Then when you start to see the breakout, you can start to see Ooh. the risk. It starts to get a little bit skewed here. You have to look at where there's more volume because, you know, when you have these low volume spikes, that's one person thinking the price. So when you have, so you look for a little bit more volume, you can get a little better standard. 534. Exactly. So we would expect that the Mookie bets would be roughly a third of that. So 170, 180 bucks. But that's only at 200. And you're and kind then... of in that, you're kind of in that range here. So right now you're starting to see a little divergence. People want the 10 versus the nine. So, you know, 395, that's a lot. Call 400. But, down, but then down there, it's 135 and then 145. Exactly. So you're looking at roughly that three to one. The thing is the prices have kind of, you know, if we scroll up just a little bit here, you can see that you're making plenty of money on this. So if you go back to the beginning here, started out a little bit higher, you made some more money. Um, but if you don't want to put in, you know, if you can get them early, that's great. But if you don't want to buy a $500 card, 
<laughs> you want to put in a little less, there's still plenty of money to be made. And the nice thing is, um, you know, instead of buying here, just as a, this one shows up. Ronald Acuna. Yeah, this one shows up. Pretty, this one actually works out pretty well. And so what I am doing right now with Acuna. And then, um, then the PSA 9 against the PSA 10. The PSA 9 is still lower. Well, it's always going to be lower. There's always going to be more demand for that perfect condition card. 180 bucks. I would expect this to be around 60 or something like that. 50 or 60. So it's it $50 card. Yeah, 40. this got a little bit too nutty, so it's yeah, difficult to make a... And then that one's only at 70. Yeah, so you want to look for, again, where's the volume at? So here's a nice high volume area where a lot of people are pretty comfortable with the price. 210. So right, we would expect 60 or $70, 65 bucks or something like and that. And then now it's at 70. Yeah, so there it is. So you have that 3 to 1 ratio here. And that's held pretty true. And you can see, again, um, the, the price original value. You really need to kind of start it back you know, more, more um, here. And... Um, you know, as these things kind of go, yeah, the PSA 10 is going to outpace. And again, this is why for $50, $60 cards, I'm happy to buy the PSA 10, like the Albies, Bregman, you know, guys like that. Um, I would, I would do it. You know, these were some guys that you know, I didn't get the 10s or anything like that, but pack pulled. But, you know, when you get up to this level here, I think you can start to see that the relationship. 210. Exactly, exactly. 210, you're looking at about 70 bucks. And so that three to one relationship, you know, kind of. Kind of hangs in there for most and then players. And that one's at 150. Yeah, so we should be about 50 bucks here, you know, 40 or 50. So I think 40. he's a little undervalued. I've got about eight bids out right now for PSA 9 Acunas, and it all capped at about $45. So we'll see what happens. I think there's room for this one to rise a little bit more. Uh, but you're kind of in the three to one area here. And again, you know, so the, the percentage change, sure, the PSA 10 works better, but that's... It, it had a bit of a head start as well. Once you start to really get interest in the player, then that relationship really starts to, to even out just a little bit here. So um, where that kind of goes away. And then Ken Griffey, PSA 10. <laughs> yeah, where this doesn't really work anymore. So that's more for modern, modern cards. Um, when you get to the older cards, I mean, it's harder to find those things in um, that PSA 10 condition. So... You know, the population is way lower, so there is uh, quite a bit more premium uh, on those cards there. So so the PSA 9 is just going like a straight line. Yeah. The PSA 10 hanging is... Hanging around 100 bucks, and this one's hanging around... 700 So there's a seven times difference for the most part here. You see how this one's flatlined in this one, because it's going to be a lot harder to find a PSA 10, because we all yeah, threw stuff in shoeboxes back then. And then. And then it's going up the mountains, and it's going down, up, <laughs> up, down, 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 1475, up, up. 200, so that seven times relationship is there. So, um, do, 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 where, where are we at here? You know, sixteen hundred. Exactly. So again, hundred and eighty bucks. You know, so roughly seven seven times, um, maybe even a little bit more. So as this thing has gone up, so when you get to those older cards, then condition becomes more of a play. But I think for the more modern cards, condition is really really. Um, there, there's a lot more PSA tens out there. People will get them and they send them in for grading right away. Um, so then, you know, PSA nine, again, I can rarely tell the difference between the two and I'm sure there is a difference, but I, I can't pick it out, but the relationship there, you can still make money off the PSA nines. Um, you know, you have that relationship and if that at the beginning, it's a little bit, a little bit screwy, but as you go along and you start to see that, you know, and Acuna three to one kind of hang in there and it'll always be at three to one. So, you know, I would expect that if the Acuna card right now goes from you know, $150 to 300, that's a double, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, if the PSA 9 I'm getting right now goes from 40 to 80, that's a double. Yeah. So the percentages are the same. And that's how you want to express things in terms of percentages. You never say, oh, gosh, you know, I made $1,000 on Tesla stock last year. You say, I made 50% Ooh, or 100 Tesla. Yeah, exactly. Or 100% or something. Like that's always expressed in percentages. So you throw the dollar amounts away and look for the percentages for the most part. So does that make some sense? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's about the percentage moves. You never express things in dollar dollar terms. And I think if you're buying PSA 9s, there's always going to be more demand for, for PSA 10. But once those prices start to get up a bit, you know, $150, $200, I think people will start to go for the 9s. And that's when you see that relationship really start to track. And so we can do one more so you can kind of see the uh, the point here. Yep, Juan Soto. Good player. I think he'll. Uh, I think he'll hang around for a little while. And that's the card exactly that I have. It is. What? I guessed it. I guessed it. Wow! I thought I had the PSA nine. Well, is it in a PSA holder? Uh, yes. I don't think that's true. 
Okay. Uh, no? No, it's in a top loader. Very different. Uh, yeah, it's on a top loader. So we can see, like, as soon as these start, these things start to uh, get some buying interest, and there's a lot of volume, then the relationship starts to take hold. So, That's at a, um, 65, 67. Yeah, so a little over 20 bucks, maybe. And then... 20 bucks, yeah. So we see a spike there, 150, 150, maybe looking at 50 on that one. So it's roughly 40, 50, yeah, 48. 48. Exactly, so you see the peak here. 290 there. Exactly. So about 100 bucks there, $90. So there's that 3 to 1 that's kind of in play here. So right now we're sitting in around That one's at 180. 187, so probably a little over 60 bucks. 65 there and then 62. 62. So yeah, so that 3 to 1 relationship I think for modern cards is kind of there. So buying a PSA 9 is fairly priced to the PSA 10 I think on the Soto. You know, if you can start to find them for 50 bucks, then there's an opportunity here. But otherwise, you know, you're buying the PSA 9 just because you want to pay 180 bucks for a PSA 10. Now, the nice thing about this, like, um, when when I was, you know, a while ago when I was getting these, um, you, know, you could buy three of them. And then you will have the equivalent of the PSA 10. Then you can still get the same dollar amount as in addition. And then I can give you one and I can give Henry one and I can have one. And I don't have to spend $600 on Sotos. And I, mean, I think Henry, I have something that looks pretty Henry nice. Henry probably ruin it. That's why he doesn't get his right away. Yep. So, all right. Quick lesson. What do you think? Learn something? A little um, bit. PSA 9, not so bad in most cases. Yeah, but... Cluck the card, not the grade. It was but, kind you know, of complicated. You know, you'll, you'll get it. You'll get it. I think you'll I do will. just fine. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.